dear friends it is that time of the year when people the world over along with an estimated 2.38 billion christians are getting ready to celebrate the birth of jesus christ the only true incarnation and savior of the world it is believed that in the first century the population of the world was around 200 million people and around 20 to 40000 may have been christians you know our country india is a land of multiple gods and incarnations or avatar as it is called in sanskrit to all those who believe in the multiplicity of god i can only comment or say that it is based on the revelation they have received i can only pray that the holy spirit reveals to them the truths about the one true god and his son our lord and savior jesus christ dr babu varges in his latest book a global leader coming soon writes from genesis 12 to malachi 4 of the old testament we read the history of the preparation for the coming or incarnation of jesus christ into this world you know first to understand the incarnation of christ as mentioned in the letter to the philippians it will be important to know what the lord had to say about the israelites many millennia ago and we read that in deuteronomy 7 verse 6 to 8 for you are a holy people who belong to the lord your god of all the people on earth the lord your god has chosen you to be his own special treasure the lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were numerous than other nations for you were the smallest of all nations you know as uh, i understand it the lord was already making known his plans and his promises his aspects and attributes his name and nature his divinity and deity in creating man god deeply desired to share his glory with man and god deeply desired man to have communion or fellowship with him israel's history is a history where god was patiently at work preparing a way for the incarnation of his love at last in jesus christ that in him and through him he might bring his covenant to complete fulfillment and gather man back into joyful communion or fellowship with himself Now let me read to you from the letter to the Philippians that I mentioned before. It's in chapter 2 verses 6 to 8 and Paul writes about our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. he took the humble position of a slave i repeat he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form he humbled himself in obedience to god and died a criminal's death on a cross isn't this amazing the son of god the lord jesus christ the alpha and the omega jehovah Yeshua Yahweh Yeshu Jesus the only true incarnation of God giving up his life for the people who he had created in his own likeness and image he died for mankind in spite of the horrific hatred absolute anger restless rebellion and vindictive violence that we heaped on him dear friends that's what our true and chilling nature is the study of the writings of the early church fathers and their approach to the knowledge of god is captured in the statement only through god can god be known i repeat only through god can god be known 
I don't see it better explained than what we read in the Gospel of John chapter 1 and verse 14. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory the glory of the father's one and only son the scottish protestant minister and theologian thomas f torrens known and uh, deeply respected for his pioneering work in the study of science and theology he's written uh, multiple articles and books and he, he writes God is transcendently free and in need of nothing beyond himself for as Father, Son and Holy Spirit he is an eternal communion of love and personal being in himself as an eternal communion of love God creates not from need but from his gracious will to share his love with creation now let me end today's devotion with a glorious announcement made by the angels to the shepherds who were watching over their flocks in the mountainous region of Judah somewhere near Bethlehem and we find that in, uh, in Luke chapter 2 and verses 10 and 11 what does the angel declare he says or rather shouts I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. May God bless you throughout this day and I pray that you have a nice and beautiful day ahead. Thank you.